Why aren't the brakes working? Because I cut the brakes! Wild car! In the last video, we had an ABS system, and now we have a nothing system. We've completely removed that, so we're going to add some steel braided brake lines. If you're coming to this video wanting to know how to install steel braided brake lines, I'm so we can show you that, but you got to understand in the last video we had to remove the old brake lines, so I don't really have those to show you to remove. Still think you'll be able to understand the process though if you watch this video, but if you need help, go back watch the last video. And, it's just more complicated with the ABS system. There's spaghetti wire mess of stuff in there. We got rid of all that because uh, ABS is the fun police and I didn't want ABS, especially when I got supermoto wheels. I'll try to show y'all how to bend the wire around the dash a little bit, see a little easier. I know the, the, the thing goes right over the dash, just bothers people. Personally, I think it's not a big deal. First, let me show you though what we have. Coromoto has been setting us up with brake lines for a little while over here. Much appreciation to Coromoto. If you ever need a set of brake lines or hydraulic clutch, lines for you fancy boys. Coromoto makes some great stuff there. Made in America, stainless steel, lifetime warranty. These things are even DOT approved. You can order them in all kinds of crazy cool colors here. We've gone for the whole red, white, and blue thing. They have not had a chance yet to make brake lines for a CRF300L. So I basically had to come up with my own. Custom lines are not that hard to come up with. I pretty much measured everything out here using a piece of tubing. You can go along there and uh, you just fill out a custom order form. It's really not that hard. But if they did have a set, I would basically have ordered a non-ABS since that's what we're doing here. We're gonna go directly to Caliper to the master. No, no stops in between. But why do we wanna put stainless steel brake lines on our motorcycle? What's that gonna do? Didn't engineering explain, say that they're worthless? So we got our brake here. We're just looking at the front here just for simplicity. But let's say here's your brake, your lever, you push down, there's a little piston here with hydraulic fluid and it goes doo -doo 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 down through our brake line to our caliper. Momentum into heat. Let's say this is your brake line. When you squeeze the brakes, these rubber lines will expand a little bit. I mean, they're literally made of rubber. What do you expect them to do? They're gonna swell just a little bit and they'll get a little bit bigger. And some of our braking force now goes to occupying this bigger space instead of squeezing the caliper. So when this swells like that, if you can imagine like, if you were to apply like perfectly even all at once braking pressure, hypothetically, what you'd end up with is kind of like a weird like spike. That's a graph <laughs> of how your brake pressure is applied. But when you go to a steel braided line, the tube inside of it is like a hard sort of flexible plastic. It still has a tube itself that could probably expand if left on its own. But what they do is they surround that with a little steel cage. This steel cage in there won't let it expand. And it means our brake pressure is much more even when we hit the brakes. We don't have a weird pulsing sensation in there. Even with brand new brake lines, if you go up and you hold them with your hand and you squeeze it really hard, the brake, you can feel it within your own hand pulsing. And as brakes get older, this becomes worse and worse. And then the great thing that you get when you go to a stainless set of lines, feel is so consistent. And you can ask pretty much anyone that's ever gone to a set of stainless steel brake lines. They will all tell you on a motorcycle. It makes a huge difference. Rubber brake lines are supposed to be replaced every few years anyway. If you're where you need to replace them, you might as well, just for cost effectiveness, replace them with a set of stainless steel ones because they don't wear out, they have a lifetime warranty. I think a lot of people look at them and go, oh, I don't see the point in them other than maybe they're like cool colors, but it's one of the things, once you can experience it, you're gonna get spoiled on it and you're gonna want every bike you have to have these stainless steel brake lines. Now, the one thing I do get every time I install some of these is somebody chirping at me with something they heard from Engineering Explain, because he did a video and he essentially came to the conclusion that they weren't worth it. You yeah, remember, he's talking about a car and there's a couple things about that. Cars do have uh, steel brake lines, throughout most of the braking system. It's a big spider. Those lines don't expand, they don't move. The only part of the car that has a rubber line is just across like the last bit of the suspension. There's just a short little run of it. Probably less than 10% of it's actually rubber lines. And then the other thing too is you're talking about a car. Car versus motorcycle, the feedback and the feel is the reason we like motorcycles. It's a complete different experience. Engineering explained isn't wrong for what he says, but he's, he doesn't ride a motorcycle and smart guy, but sometimes he says things that make me go. Now let's start with the rear. The rear. On these dirt bikes, what we always end up having is a short area between the caliper and it comes down and we have a stiffener tube. As they go through these clips, they're not holding it super tight. They're allowing a bit of movement in these. This is basically because they have so much suspension travel on these bikes, it's stiff so this thing can't you know, get out of control in there and get into something like into the spokes. It still allows it to have some bit of flexibility if it needs to move around. Their master right up here, you usually just do a short little loop and go right into it. This loop's a little longer than normal. The exhaust and the shock are pretty tight in there. I'm thinking we're gonna have to come up with some sort of solution. I haven't had them throw two grommets in here. 
I may use these. I can always carefully trim these back off if I don't think I need to use them. Uh, the other thing that you would normally do is you would pull off your old brake line because if normally you're just pulling one off and replacing it and you would hold them end to end. You'd look at your banjos and you need to adjust your new line to match the old one. And the way you do that is you'd actually slip two plastic pins through these banjos and you can twist the whole thing. It takes a good bit of force, but you can twist these on the fittings down here. If you match the old one, you'll know everything will be good when you put the new one on. Unfortunately, I can't really do that right now because, well, this is a custom line. I'm going to have to basically place it up on here and then see how it's all going to match up. The very first, first thing you'd want to do is drain out as much fluid as you can. If you go watch the last video, you can see where we did that. These banjo bolts, we use a crush washer on both sides. Uh, but for right now, since I'm just sort of placing everything up, I'm just going to place it in here loosely. These clips right here that hold it on, these are the ones that were built for the ABS. They've got like a little extra cap thing on in there, which we don't need. And you could just live with it like that. It's not really gonna make a difference, but I have ordered the correct ones and they'll be here probably next week. I'll just swap those out. I'll make a 20 minute video about that. <laughs> Normally what we would do is just do a little loop right back here into our master. Now the problem I'm running into when I was measuring all this is I was realizing how tight of a space it is in here. And I think that's because the stock exhaust has a big catalytic converter kind of right in this area. But I was just worried that if I put a loop in here, see how it would kind of come up high? I think it would hit the exhaust. And if you try to get away from it, you're gonna get into the shock. Neither one of those would be good, right? We also have to keep in mind that this whole line is gonna move up and down. This bike has 10 inches of travel. Now the good thing is we're right up here by the pivot point. The travel is pretty minimal right here, but we do need to make sure that we're allowing this line to turn correctly. Here's kind of what I'm thinking. And this is why I had him add grommets on here. Now these grommets, if you get a 3 8 P-clip, I know it's a junky standard size, but these 3 8 P-clips are stainless steel and they fit perfectly on these guys. And when you pinch them, they don't want to move. You could still slide them in there if you had to. The factory ABS system kind of went up this way and then another line eventually came down. I'm thinking we're going to clamp it here, do a little loop, come back around, and use another P-clip to kind of secure it and then bring it into our master, which is right over here. Now I've removed the exhaust and the side panel just to give us better access. I probably could do this without removing those, but there's no way I'd be able to film it. So it's just simpler to go ahead and pop that off. And you can see where we've added our first P-clip to hold the line. That should give us enough bin there. It is very snug to get my hands in there and film. So I've kind of just had to stick it in there and show you after the fact. So I went back and forth a bit with the routing uh, ultimately, what I've ended up with is it comes up like this through this P-clip, does a loop, travels around this bracket, and comes down through another P-clip, which I've mounted right there. Still pretty good distance between the exhaust. Also worth noting, it's not actually touching that bracket. Uh, I wouldn't want it just resting against that. That would cause it to probably chafe over time. It's kind of an interesting way to do it. It's making a big loop, but this does give us what we need. So with all that lining up, I can pull my tape off now. I should have put this tape on from the beginning. Uh, there's a very beginning. I was trying to kind of whack this through there and see where I was going to put it. And I did uh, scuffed up my white banjo and that kind of sucks because it was so pretty. Coromoto did set me up with these. These are their race spec bolts. What they have is a small hole through them so you could safety wire them. Uh, some racetracks require things like that. We put a crush washer on the top of it and on the bottom of it. When we tighten these up, these crush washers will crush slightly as the name states. So no brakey fluid goes everywhere and we can stop, which would be a good thing. That should be plenty for that. Probably could have gotten away with a slightly shorter stiffener tube for the rear part, but not gonna hurt anything. Just means you can always see a little bit of my pretty blue brake line right here instead of more. Now we just need to bleed the rear brake. We'll fill it up. I'm gonna be using this brake bleeding tool. It'll, it actually sucks the fluid right out of the system using pressure to create a vacuum. It's crazy, I know, right? Lots of little napkins in place. Like I poked a small hole in this one. I'm gonna put it right over the nipple like it's ready for surgery. Got a new bottle of, this is dot four. It says dot three, dot four. The main thing here is we need to pull all this, the old air bubbles out. You don't need a super big bottle of this. I always end up buying too big of a bottle. And the thing is once you've opened one of these up, wanna use it and then toss what you don't use. A fancy word and it absorbs moisture out of the air. Just get a normal sized bottle. If you're going through massive jugs of it and you still can't get the air bubbles out, then you got problems. Now, like I said, I'm gonna use this tool. It's awesome, it's gonna suck everything really fast and all we're basically gonna do is watch that line and we can watch the air bubbles go through it. We're gonna just keep pulling it until you see solid flu with no bubbles. And you'll tighten it up the end and we wanna hit the brake and make sure it feels nice and firm. You don't wanna go, ah, oh, the pedal's a little squishy, but it's fine, it's still got enough play. That's no good, man. 
when these brake lines get hot, the fluid is fine. It can get hot. What can't get hot is little bubbles in there. They're tiny and will go bigger and then you will literally have no brake out of nowhere. Top the fluid off. You want to keep your eye on this because it'll drop so quick that you can actually pull a bubble back into the system. I like to leave the tool directly on it so I can crack it open, start the suction, and then shut it while it's still under vacuum. And I find that's just a better way than like trying to pull it off, get the tool back on. You can pull a little bubble back down in there. So we'll go ahead and get this going. I'm so shocked by how quick this pulls the fluid. See how this feels? Oh, dude, that's almost there. <laughs> Give it a quick pump. I'm gonna push down it hard while I crack it and I'll shut it. That's it right there. We hit it. God, it's so easy with this tool. I think I've got a little bit too much fluid in there, but I'm gonna basically put this cap on. It's got this little rubbery bit. I'm gonna stick it on there and tighten it up and let it just sort of pee out what it doesn't need. Looking good. Let's move on to the front. Our front brake line is much like the rear. We've got a, two soft sections, or bendy bits, and then we have a stiffener tube in the middle. Because you have such a high travel suspension, 10 inches on this bike, plus a high fender, you do make some tricky things that the brake line has to do. It basically has to be able to travel up and down with the suspension. That's what the stiffener tube lets us do. Now I did a whole video about this bike and about how you shouldn't Velcro or zip tie down your, uh, your brake line to the handlebars because a lot of people were doing that with this bike saying, oh, it gets in the way of the dash. So what your brake line is doing is flexing like crazy in there. It's not how it's supposed to be set up. I'm not saying to be mean to anybody, but don't set your brake line up like that. Oddly enough, I don't know which end is which, but they both have the exact same bend on it the way I ordered it. And since you can adjust where the stiffener tube is, you can move it. I'm just gonna pick an end and go. And we'll start down here. Now I'm gonna fish this brake line around the back side of the fork because it is how you should run it if you can. But when you go to supermoto setup, there's a good chance we're gonna have to switch that. Snug this down by hand, leaving it still kind of loose. Get your core moto <laughs> logo the right way. Fish it through these two guides along the forks. And then this brake line will come around and hook right here into our master. You might say, ah, oh, it's still very much in front of the dash. Now if I were to leave it twisted like this and force it in, it could give this a little bit of a bend. It's not a ton, but this little bit will end up making the brake line do a little bit of this dancing. This is how it would be normally sitting. And by giving it a little bit of a forward throw, we end up with something more like that. Now you don't want to do this super extremely, but you can do this a little bit and you can get a system where the line is much further out of your way than it would normally be. Since I'm happy with it like this, I'm gonna go ahead and get my banjo bolt with the crush washer and we'll go to bolt this up. Now I'll say this, when they have a little bit of a twist like that, getting these to thread, can be a little bit of a pain. You may want to be or taking the rest of this brake line, kind of wrenching it over while you tighten it so that you can get it to start. Now, I am trying to do this where, where the banjo is resting up against the, the factory little bump stop on there, which should keep the line from ever trying to twist or loosen up on us. Remember, this line is going to be moving around, so it's good if you can use those if it works out in your favor. If it turns out, where, however you're doing your lines, you can't use those, it's not the end of the world, but it's just nicer to know that they're there when, and you can use them. And I'll go and get my brake bracket back on here. Now, just like the rear ones, this is the one that was designed to hold the ABS sensor as well. It's like a two bucks for the one without it. I have ordered it, but we can use this in the meantime. I'm also gonna pull this up a little bit, just enough so that I'm pulling up some of the extra slack down here. Pull this banjo back off and add the crush washers. Tighten that up, don't go crazy on it. That should do good. Now we can start filling it up. Remember when I was filling the rear up, how I could easily access the master and the caliper at the same time? Well, obviously you don't have that convenience up here. And as fast as this thing pulls the fluid through, uh, you really wanna be up here staying on top of it. This is one of those times where if you had someone that could help you, someone to be pouring while you were down there doing the other end or vice versa, it could be really good. But I think I've set this thing up pretty smart if you'll see here. Got it all hooked up and look, I can actually take my foot and hit it. So adding fluid while I hold it down there and we're just going to pull some through for a bit. Uh, honestly, at this point too, I've probably used a tiny little bit of this bottle. You don't need massive jugs of this stuff. Sure you have some plenty of rags around and just assume you're going to spill it because if you don't assume, then you will spill it. And, you know, if you do all the things in the world to protect yourself, you won't. Start by just topping this thing up. I'm going to check it down there and see how that feels. <laughs> it's literally perfect. 
This is why this tool is good. This is why you want this tool. Button everything up now. Put my cap back on. Snug that down evenly. A little back and forth action. This is how she likes it. The new brake lines are installed. Everything is feeling good. No more ABS. I think the only thing to do now is go take it out for a test ride and see how it actually works. Here we are out and about in the real world doing a test of our new brakes. Now the first thing I did when I got these going is that I rode around the neighborhood slowly touching the brakes making sure everything felt good. The front in particular, I gotta remember, it's got a whole different rotor. You gotta give that a minute to sort of bed into itself. Luckily I've already done all that for you. That's boring. You get that. You just basically ride around braking very slowly. The ABS light is just solidly on. Do you see it there? From my point of view, the brake line almost actually just covers it. <laughs> <laughs> I can live with that. I might try to play with that later, but honestly, I don't care right now. Second thing that worth noting is, uh, look, you can actually see the dash like really easily now. It's definitely moved it enough to where it's not a problem anymore. Can we use our giant front brake though in the dirt like this? Yeah, like it's not that hard, guys. Like <laughs> if you think having a big old brake like that too much, then, well, then don't do it, I guess, but I think it's fine. <laughs> Just dance the rear around now. So you should be able to do it. Here's the thing, you could turn the rear off, but you couldn't turn the front off. And every time I rode some stuff like this, you know, one, half the time I forget to have turned it off, and then you have to come to a complete stop, and every time you cycle the key. Secondly, I always noticed the front just seemed to be so extra aggressive. The degree at which it would sort of kick in was just too much. <laughs> it's a lot more than that ABS system was willing to give up, you know? <laughs> oh, construction zones. Always good fun. Look, you can just easily one finger grab that thing and slow it right on down. Hear it? <laughs> I think it's honestly not a problem. It's actually pretty easy to lock these little dual sport tires up on the front and let back off, you know, without dropping the bike. That's just front brake right there. I am my own ABS. I don't need you. Yeah. The fun police are gone. really mention it enough in the video i got i got too sidetracked with a hundred other things going on but honestly the front brake on this bike i, I think is pretty bad stock i uh, got a little better as the pads got some wear on them you know they kind of bedded in a little but i think kind of just put way too weak of a brake on here and then the goofy thing is is the the rally version of this bike has a pretty like a bigger rotor on it not as big as what we've got but it really shows that just a little bit of a bigger rotor could have done it could have actually made them decent between the steel braided line from poor moto or warp nine supermoto front brake and of course in general just deleting the whole abs system and having a direct you know control over the brakes we've gone completely the other way these brakes are awesome now and this is the kind of stuff i love this is just makes the bike more enjoyable to ride the dash is visible the brakes are good no stupid buttons so many wins over those last two videos and now we can do the supermoto setup there was a lot more grip on that front tire than that that the abs thought it had i know it's dual sport tire but come on man look at that <laughs> yeah, dude. Now it's looking proper. Got a little bit of dust on it, just like it should have. Brake line's happy in there, doing its thing. Dash can be seen. The most important thing I think y'all need to know is that this isn't even the real version of the video. This is the watered down public version. And I don't say that to be a jerk. I'm just letting you know that's how it has to be on YouTube. So if you want to see the ad-free, uncensored, real version of this video, there's one dollar a month. Came out about a week ago. Head on over to Patreon. Come hang out with me in the Discord. Talk with me because I always get in there every night and BS around with everybody. Just about every night. And it's a good old time. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. Let me know what y'all want me to do next. All right, I got to go. Y'all take care.